as David said at the, the start of the day, we're piloting with the Education Training Foundation um, the transformational leadership model um, within the city of Peterborough. And I say within Peterborough because we're doing this at a strategic level um, across the city. We're not just looking at education for this. And so I want to take you on, on our journey. We're part way through this, we haven't completed yet. But in order to do that, I need to take it to back a step. So Peterborough, as with many cities, has its aspirations and it has its challenges. We've got city-wide strategic boards, all cities do, and we've got plans to deliver what it is we need to deliver to, to meet those city needs. Now we know that we can't achieve the plans as a city without taking a multi-agency, multi-organisational approach to the work that we do. And we have strategic boards, and they are your traditional strategic boards where the usual people sit round the table, the local authorities there, commissioning, health, housing, and it has a traditional board structure. Reports are circulated in advance of the meeting. Quite often, lots of reports are circulated in advance of the meeting. And then in the meeting, people talk about what they've already circulated. And so, you know, this, this is a familiar site, I'm sure, with many meetings that we all attend. And the people that attend those meetings are there to represent a sector, or they chair a group at a strategic level, and they're coming together uh, to talk about whatever the particular board is, is looking at. Now, strangely enough, this model has worked, and we have seen changes in the city as a result of, of these multi-agencies and organisations coming together. But we also know if we change the way that we work strategically, we could achieve even more. One of the things that's already changed in the city is that skills are now represented around the table at the city-wide strategic meetings. And this has come on the back of about 18 months ago, I set up a Peterborough Strategic Skills Partnership Group because we wanted that holistic approach to skills as a city. But this board is not provider-led. This board is led by the Chamber, the Local Enterprise Partnership, the Local Authority, the Department of Work and Pensions, the um, Economic Regeneration Company, the voluntary sector, the schools are represented at a secondary level, and then, of course, the providers are there as well. But it's not a group of providers that are sat talking about what we need to do. It really is taking that, that approach across the city. And it's starting to achieve much, and because it's people at a senior level, what's been recognised is skills have a significant role to play in underpinning everything we're trying to achieve. Um, and although we know that, for some of those other organisations to recognise it is, is quite an achievement. And so now I, as chair of the, the strategic group, the skills strategic group, sit on some of these city-wide strategic boards. And so in conversations with the ETF about this new model, this transformational leadership model, we we're exploring trying this across a wider group in the city, not just looking at the educational element or within an organisation. And the one that we're doing that with is the Health and Wellbeing Programme Board. And this is the strategic board across the city that is focusing on securing and improving the health and wellbeing of local citizens. So on the group, we have the Director of Public Health, the Corporate Director of People and Communities, the Housing Association, the Chief Executive, Joint Commissioning of their Mental Health, and now Education and Skills are sat around the table. Because it is recognised that we have a role to play in supporting those individuals to become active citizens, to give them the social capital and the skills that they need to participate in society and move onwards and upwards within the workplace. As a group, if you ask us, we would say we have collective speed and enthusiasm, a cohesive approach, we align our priorities and we engage strategically. Sounds fantastic. But what we haven't always got is our eye on the bigger picture, not really understanding what we want to do as terms of a group for impact. And so this board actually feeds into one of the two main city boards. We have a health and wellbeing board and we have a safer Peterborough partnership board. And what's already happened from working uh, with our facilitators from the ETF is 
Do we still need two boards? Should we look at combining them into one? So it's driving it outside of the group as well as the group that we're working in. And so that group has now had two or three sessions working with the facilitators. And sort of the, the leadership word of the, the, the year, if you like, is systems leaders. And asked if we're systems leaders, we would say, yes, we are. We have our outcomes, we're focused on them. We contain our personal organisational egos, we work for the greater good. We get done what needs to be done. We understand and appreciate each other's perspectives. We work with openness and transparency use evidence-based sources, work together, speak well of each other, we keep our promises, we behave well, and we deliver. That's what we say, that's what we believe we do. But actually, when you start looking at this transformational leadership model and scratch the surface, you ask yourself, do we? Are we really doing that? And actually, what we need in this brave new world, is it more than that system's leadership? Because we are the leaders that are going to take things forward, and we do have to recognise that it is a different skill set that we now need and we now need to nurture that's different to that of actually running the organisation. So, being a leader in this collaborative multi-partnership setting, well, it does require that different skill set. Julian talked about the skills of running the organisation, which are important, and we have to do that. But he also mentioned collaboration as being the way forward. And that's a slightly different version of leadership because it reflects the complexities and the way that we have to work within this modern society. We actually need everybody's intelligence that's sat around the table to address the issues that we're trying to, do, to look at and achieve. We have to look at ourselves as individuals within that group and we all need to be signed up to the new approach and the new way of working. And we actually need to understand the vision and the role each of us must take in, in achieving that vision in this collaborative approach. But what's really important is that we actually understand what the desired outcomes are of the group and what we're trying to achieve. So it's a shift, it's a shift in the power. Within the organisation, we have that positional power. It derives from that original role, we know what we want to do, we have a leadership structure that allows us to take and drive that forward. But in this other way of working, in this partnership working, in this collaborative working, it is about our personal power. Because we're sat around the table with people that we don't have the positional power over. And so it's about our ability to influence our personality, our charisma, our networks that we operate under. So as a group, as the Health and Wellbeing Board, we actually looked at what is it we want to do and can we work differently? And the answer was, yes, we can, but actually we don't know how to. And this is where this transformational leadership programme is coming in. With the Strategic Partnership Board, we know what needs to change. Um, and there are things that we do as a group at a strategic level that actually make that quite a challenge. As a group, we know each other extremely well. We're all seen as strategic senior leaders across the city, and we respect one another and we respect each other's level of knowledge. And in a sense, this is where the problem starts, because we're actually too nice to each other in this world. We haven't developed a culture of challenge. After all, we're all senior leaders. We know what we're talking about, and we're there because of our areas of expertise. So who are we to challenge another senior leader on their areas of expertise? And if you ask the group, do we challenge, half will say yes, and half will say no, but actually we don't. We don't really challenge and debate passionately about the subjects. We accept and respect each other's positions. One of the other things that we find is we're all really busy, as everybody in this room is. And so we arrive at a meeting with a pile of papers that we've not really had time to read and digest, and we probably don't understand. As one of the group members said, a senior director within the local authority, my PA prints off my papers for the meeting and they're sat on my desk at the start of the day. If I had to read every paper for every meeting I attend, I'd never retain anything. I'd never get anything done. And then the third area that we have challenges with is the perceived barrier. 
around the table we all agree we're working to the same aim, we're working for the same reason. And when we talk about doing things differently, when we talk about some of the changes we want to make, somebody somewhere in the room will pipe up and go, oh yeah, that's great, I'm signed up to that, I agree with it in the group, but when I go back to, and then they'll quote somebody who is seen to be in a position of power, either within their authority or in the locality, and say, they won't like it, they won't allow it to happen, we'll never get it past them. So we've really started to drill down and identify some of the areas that stop us working more effectively than we do. And it makes you consider, if we can get over those barriers, if we can just chip away at them a little bit, we will achieve significant things in terms of what we're doing. One of the things that we've been looking at as part of this journey, or starting to look at, is the five dysfunctions of a team. Um, and in this book, it actually explores the fundamental causes of organisational politics and team failure. It describes those many pitfalls that we can face when we seek to row together. Because everybody in this group really wants to achieve. We think we're all rowing together, but perhaps we're not. One of the first areas that it talks about in the five dysfunctions of the team is absence of trust. That unwillingness to be vulnerable in the group. And I think that can be a real barrier for senior managers because they feel they are always expected to know the answers to things. And they actually don't have permission to say, I don't know. And so we need the group to actually get to a level in which they can do that. Try and stop people from being vulnerable and being in that safe space. It talks about seeking artificial harmony over constructive, passionate debate. And you can really see this within the group because we don't want to challenge each other on their area of expertise. And although it's a senior strategic group, there are still different levels of seniority within that group. So you may have a senior leader whose manager is in there, or their manager's manager, or a manager from another organisation that is a peer of their manager. So you can still see that that vulnerability sits there and people may sit back a little bit rather than challenge what they may want to. And so we need to change and develop that. And of course, if we don't read the papers in advance, then how can we really go into debate and have a discussion and decisions that are based on sound judgment across the whole group? And so, when we had our last meeting of our board, and um, we had um, Catherine and Anne there from, from the ETF with us, one of the things that actually came apparent was we actually haven't said what it is we want to achieve as a group and therefore we don't know what each one of us contribute or how we can support each other in our roles or our organisations. And when we reflected back afterwards, why have we never done this? It actually came from the fact that we made assumptions about each other. We assumed because we're senior, we know what we're talking about, and of course we know what it is we're trying to achieve. So that's one of the first things we need to rectify. So we need to articulate what our vision is in order to be able to identify within ourselves what it is each single one of us can contribute to that group, what it is we can do to support each other, and then how can we support each other's services and, and organisations. We need to really articulate what we believe success looks like. And from that, we'll then be able to identify what our roles are going to be within that group. So we're adopting the transformational leadership model because we do need to shape these solutions in this complex new world. And we need to be able to look at ourselves as individuals, but as individuals within the group itself. We've committed to undertake working with this model and we have agreed that we have a desire to do things differently as a group. We have a lot of diversity in that group, so therefore a lot of skills, and we need to ensure that we maximise that. What we absolutely have to do is be prepared to look at ourselves as individuals and the way that we operate within the group. We need to have a united shared vision, develop a collective commitment to working collaboratively, and be forward thinking and embrace innovation. Because we are committed as a group to develop, but we need a strategy to actually be able to deliver our strategy. And that needs to incorporate accountability. We have to go to the group knowing that we're committed to taking back the work to the organisation, not just attending a meeting and going on to the next one. And we need to understand and recognise 
and apply degrees of influence and authority within the group. And also recognise that we have networks and we also have people outside of the group that have influence that we may need to call upon and maximise that as a group. We need to align the strategic organisational outcomes and recognise it's a significant piece of work that we're undertaking. So develop it in actual chunks. The Health and Wellbeing Board for the City of Peterborough has a lot to achieve. And so if we can identify those top priorities, articulate what we want the success to be, therefore we can focus on what we're going to look at first and not have this scattergun approach of trying to address everything that we need to. And more importantly, we have to have a commitment to applying the actions beyond the meeting in the organisation and actually within our wider networks. So the learning for us is going to be really important and we are still on the journey. We accept that leaders aren't fully formed and we need to learn and develop at all times, especially with the complexities of change that we have at the moment. Our group, I feel, is open to a greater or lesser degree, humility and honesty, it's starting to come. We have to build trust in the group and be able to admit to ourselves when we're feeling less certain within that situation and recognise other people within the group and what they may or may not know. Because learning isn't just about what we know and our knowledge, it's actually about who we are and how we behave within that environment. And it's important to be honest and reflect on that. It comes back to that personal power as against the positional power. We also need to take the learning from this process back into other groups that we, we sit on, that we chair, that we're engaged in. Because if we can nurture the formation of this type of practice back in other groups, then we become a very powerful organisation, a very powerful force to address some of the challenges that we have ahead. But we need to understand the leadership capabilities that are required to do this because they are different to the organisational ones. And we ne really need to understand the impact that we're having. So, so far, we've looked at ourselves as individuals and we've done that in a very clever way with, with the facilitation of the group because if we were to go straight in with that, everybody would close up. So it's been nurtured, it's been coaxed out and it's been done in a very professional way. And a couple of the questions that we've been asked to reflect on is when we work in a team as an individual, what are the key elements that ensure we're able to be our most effective within that group? The other one is, what for each of us is the essential areas of impact for the strategy that we're working on and agreeing those? So, that's what we've looked at for each and every one of us. It is very much a journey, but we can already see the impact and the changes that we're starting to have in looking at this new way of working. And we've reviewed our individual practices in our ways of feeling, perceiving, the way we think, the way we do, how we relate and our ways of being. So we're reflecting on ourselves as individuals within this group context. We're doing things differently at a strategic level. It isn't a straightforward line. We will be going backwards and forwards on this journey because we have to have that desire to do things differently. We have to have diversity of thought and skills. We really have to be prepared to look at ourselves but be united in that shared vision develop a collective commitment to working differently, be forward thinking and embrace innovation, look at new ways of working, build the processes that allow us to do that, be very clear of the vision and the intentions that we have as a group, and to take ourselves on this journey of impact. So we're part way there, we're doing things differently, but I think we've still got a long way to go. Thank you.